Hello and welcome to a video on adding and subtracting fractions. The goals of this video will be to add and subtract fractions as well as verify the addition and subtraction of fractions on the graphing calculator. Let's go ahead and take a look at the rules for adding and subtracting fractions. Notice if we have a common denominator and we're adding two fractions, it's as easy as adding the numerators and keeping the denominator the same. And for subtraction, it's exactly the same, except we would be subtracting our numerators. Um, denominator, again, uh, stays the same. But notice the key here is in order to add or subtract, we do have to have a common denominator. To add or subtract when denominators are different, we will need to find a common denominator. And that is, well, we need to find the least common multiple of the denominators. That number will be the least common denominator, or LCD. Next, we will multiply by 1 using the appropriate notation n over n to express each number in terms of the LCD. Then we will add or subtract the numerators, keeping the denominator the same. And then, of course, we will simplify if possible. I'd like to spend a moment explaining why it's so important that we do find a common denominator. Let's say, for example, we consider uh, 1 half plus 1 fourth. Here's a common error that I see. 1 half plus 1 fourth, well, maybe we should just add across the top and add across the bottom. And why can't that be our answer? 1 plus 1 would be 2. 2 plus 4 would be 6. So why can't 1 half plus 1 fourth equal 2 6? Well, here's a geometric model for why that does not work. Here's a model for 1 half. Here's a model for 1 fourth. And if I was to take these two and combine them into a single fraction, it doesn't make sense that 2 6 would be our answer for a variety of reasons. First of all, thinking of this in terms of area, this, this area here is less than the original fraction of 1 half. So there's no way that we could add 1 half plus 1 fourth to get something smaller than a half. The sum of these two fractions should represent the area of combining this rectangle with this rectangle, but in this case it doesn't. So this idea is invalid. Let's take a look at this another way. Here's a model for one half. Here's a model for one fourth. Now what I've done here is I've taken the fraction for one half and I divided it into fourths. And now you can see that these two fractions, each piece is the same size. It represents one-fourth. Two-fourths equaling one-half, and this fraction is obviously one-fourth. Now if I was to combine these pieces, obviously I had three equal pieces, each piece being a fourth. So if I add these two together, it makes sense that I have three pieces. So the answer would have to be three-fourths. So this kind of emphasizes the importance of finding that common denominator. If we rewrite one-half as two-fourths modeled here, and we add in one-fourth, if our denominators are the same, we can just simply add the numerators. So that's the key, finding a common denominator before we add or subtract. Let's take a look at some examples. 3 eighths plus 5 6. We need to find the least common multiple of 8 and 6. There are a couple ways of doing this. If you can't just look at that and identify the LCD as 24, I'll show you a way that may be a little bit easier. If we write out the denominators in prime factored form, six would be two times three. Essentially what we have to do is make sure that the denominators contain the same factors. And the way we do that is we start with this denominator and say, what does this denominator have that this one doesn't? And you can see it's missing a factor of three. I can multiply this denominator by three as long as I do the same to the numerator. And there's that term in the notes of multiplying by n over n. This is equal to the value of one. Now we go to the second fraction 
and see which factors are missing in this denominator that this one has. It already has the 3, it has 1, 2, but in order for them to be the same, it's going to need two more factors of 2. Now, both fractions contain the same factors, therefore, uh, we have found the common denominator, and in fact, we have found the least common denominator of 24 indirectly. Let's multiply this back together now. We have 9 over 24, 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 gives us the 24, plus, this would be 5 times 2 times 2, that would give us 20 over 24. Now we simply add the numerators. 20 plus 9, of course, is 29. And that is fine as an answer. 29 is a prime number. If they do want us to write this as a mixed number, it would be 1 and 5 24 Taking a look at the next example, again, finding the LCD of 12 and 18 may be challenging. If you know your multiplication tables really well, you can probably uh, see that it is going to be 36. But if you can't, let's go ahead and try this prime factor method again. If I break down 12 into its primes, it would be 2 times 2 times 3. If I break down 18 into its primes, that would be 2 times 3 times 3. Again, in order to have a common denominator, these have to contain the same factors. So we can ask ourselves, what factors do we see in the second denominator that this one does not have? It already has a 2, but it doesn't have two threes. It needs another one. And I can do that as long as I multiply the top uh, by 3 as well. Now I ask the same question for the second fraction. What factors does this denominator contain that this one doesn't? and you can see it needs another factor of 2. Okay, so we're essentially multiplying by 1. They both contain two 2's and two 3's. That would be uh, 9 times 4. Again, as we mentioned, that would be 36. So we have 21, 36, minus 26, 36. Okay, now this difference is a negative value. 21 minus 26 would be a negative 5 with the denominator of 36. Let's go ahead and verify this one on the graphing calculator. I'm going to enter in 7 twelfths in a set of parentheses and then I will subtract 13 eighteenths. Again, this will give me the decimal value, but if I hit math enter enter it will convert it back to uh, a fraction for me that verifies all of our hard work now notice I threw in a couple examples here with mixed numbers now I will talk about other ways to add and subtract mixed numbers but one way is to simply convert them to improper fractions so in this case 3 times 4 plus 2 would be 14 thirds plus 19 fifths. Now this problem is a little bit easier to find the LCD. Um, 3 times 5 would give us 15. If you ever get stuck on finding a common denominator, one method you could use is just multiply the denominators together. It may not be the least common denominator, but it'll always be a common denominator. So what that tells us is if I multiply this fraction by 5 over 5, and this fraction by 3 over 3, I would have a common denominator of 15. Okay, so we'd have uh, 70 fifteenths plus 57 fifteenths. We have our common denominator. We can go ahead and add these two fractions together. 70 plus 57 would equal 127 fifteenths. Since the original problem was a mixed number, we should give this back as a mixed number. So what we would need to do now is take 127, divide it by 15. 15 goes into 127 eight times with the remainder of seven. Therefore, our mixed number would be eight and seven fifteenths. 
I hope that helps. Have a great day.